Welcome to this episode of the Shared Security Podcast. And joining me this week is the man, the myth, and YouTube legend, John Hammond. Goodness. Hi, everyone. Well, what a warm welcome. Great yes. to be here. Thanks for letting me join the party. Yeah, really glad to have you on the show, finally, because I have actually interviewed John, like, I think twice now. I think that was at the uh, the live stream events that we had with Bishop Fox. One was at DEF CON, and the other one was RSA last year. Well, we're always running around doing something. I don't know. We uh, <laughs> try to keep up, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm uh, really happy to have you on the show today. And uh, maybe for our listeners, maybe the ones that are maybe living under a rock or something that might not know who John Hammond is. Can you give a uh, quick intro to who you are? Oh, absolutely. And thank you so much. Well, hey, hi, hello. Uh, my name is John Hammond. I'm a security researcher at a company called Huntress during the day. Uh, and then at night when I can fit it in, hey, I, yeah, try to put out ed other educational content and videos and training material uh, either on YouTube or now a couple other platforms where I'm having a lot of fun just trying to share cool stuff in cybersecurity and get the messaging out and make folks more and more aware. Now, uh, if you don't know, John has a YouTube channel that has uh, you're you're getting close to actually what, two million subscribers. I think you're at like one point nine now. Well, yes, it, it is. It is a blessing. I'm very, very fortunate. Uh, and I'm just so pleased that that has blossomed uh, over the years. It's funny. It started way, way, way early in my life, even like before career time. You could find videos way back to like 2009. I think another channel that is now the main one has videos in 2011. Um, but it has been a labor of love. It, it varies between love and labor, some more than the other, but uh, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. As uh, since I, I do have a YouTube channel for the show, for the podcast, I definitely uh, know what you mean oh, by yeah. uh, a labor of love for sure. Uh, YouTube is a ton of work. Like I didn't actually realize that until like I started taking my channel a little more seriously. And the whole YouTube algorithm thing is like it, it's a whole game that you have to play, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And it's funny. I, I don't know. I think there are maybe a lot of different perspectives, opinions, some folks uh, and, and their impression of, oh, whether you play the game or whether that's disingenuous or, well, really the goal is to, I don't know, I, I'd like to help educate and, and give this to as many folks as possible. So you sort of have to play the game and that's, I don't know, you get the line, don't hate the player, hate the game thing, <laughs> blah, yes. blah, blah. Yes, yes, definitely. So uh, you have this new venture that you started called uh, Just Hacking Training. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, thank you so much for asking. Yeah, this is something that I am really excited about. I've come to the conclusion that, you know, it can't just be me. It's not just me. The YouTube channel has been me, the name John Hammond from the channel, uh, where I do the dog and pony show and sing the song and dance. But there are so many other incredible, phenomenal, genius people in our industry, in cybersecurity, in the community. And I wanted to help hey, amp this thing up. So this is our kind of college try at uh, a training platform. There are courses, there are exercises, there are activities and lab environments and all these things to hopefully offer accessible, hey, affordable, uh, and most and many times either free or pay what you can, pay what you want, name your price training. Um, but trying to get it out and about so that we just raise the bar so that we're elevating uh, cybersecurity across the whole world. Yeah, I think it's I think that's great because I, I always find that people that I talk to or people that I've mentored for their cybersecurity career, they're always looking for affordable training. And I think that has been harder to find over the last uh, many years uh, where we have, you know, there's very expensive training. I mean, costing thousands and thousands of dollars. And it's just really good to see uh, you doing something that's more affordable for people, which I think is great. Thank you so much. Well, honestly, it's been incredible to hey, get folks together uh, because uh, I've tried to share a couple courses and training and material there, but we've got an incredible list of really what we call all-stars. Hey, our, our cohort and cadre of either courseware developers or instructors and training material folks, and we're building out some really, really cool stuff. There's open source intelligence, there's dark web and cybercrime, there is learning like quantum computing and cryptography. Uh, we've got some stuff now in like malware development, so we've got some stuff in malware analysis, both blue team and red team, so mastering active directory security. It's a lot of fun to just kind of, hey, really run the gamut as much as we can to just get the education out and about. Yeah, and we will definitely link that in the show notes for everybody to, to check out, and I definitely recommend you check that out. There's 
so many great instructors. Uh, and in fact, there's some people that we've had in the show before, like Jason Haddix and several others. So uh, you definitely want to check that out for sure. Now, John, I have to ask you because I, I was watching one of your recent videos. Uh -oh. It was uh, the, oh, <laughs> oh, don't worry. It was the one that uh, you just did on the TikToks that you had found. Social engineering people, well, social engineering may be a stretch, but <laughs> getting people to uh, run PowerShell scripts uh, to do some bad things. And I'm, I'm curious to know that that's a pretty unique kind of way of distributing malware. But when we kind of think broader in terms of the state of cybercrime in general, where do you see things going this year? Because you have been in this space for a long time. A lot of your videos are on, in the cybercrime space. And I'm just really curious to see, especially when we think about AI and the way that, you know, attackers have kind of leveraged that and things are evolving. What is your take on the state of cybercrime this year? Oh, boy. Uh, big question. There's a lot to run with there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll do my darndest to kind of break it down because I think you hit upon a couple different things. The mm -hmm. one I think there were a lot of folks, I don't know, might just have a knee jerk reaction and thinking, oh, someone hacked someone and whatever, I don't know, colloquial term that we use there. And it, sometimes you consider that, oh, they're exploiting a vulnerability. Or they're using some like server side and remote exploit and uh, compromise with tradecraft there. And that's still the case, a thousand percent. I mean, that's absolutely uh, a reality. And we're seeing, I think, more and more either incidents or breaches that come from just flaws, vulnerabilities. Um, but that may very well just kind of be the tip of the iceberg now. Um, it's really interesting when you boil it down. I think a lot of recent attacks and things that have made the news and certainly make stories are the cyber criminals and the threat actors might not even need malware in the traditional sense of the term. They, they, they might not be doing something strictly on the endpoint, but they'll swing from cloud service to SaaS app, software as a service, and others to really just take advantage of identity and your access to different services and different systems. Oftentimes that's enabled by info stealer malware, which is on the endpoint, classic traditional malware, but that opens the door for what could then become ransomware that opens the door to business email compromise that enables these supply chain threats, which we're seeing all the time. And those I think are the really most sinister and spooky and scary ones, because that's the one to many attack where you kind of poison the roots of the tree and then all the mm -hmm. branches die. But all that to say, look, I know you were kind of inkling towards that. What about the, what about the AI buzzword? How about our <laughs> artificial intelligence? I think it's funny that you mentioned the TikTok one, the video, yeah. the showcase that I did just previously. Well, that was simple, stupid social engineering uh, and phishing, because really it's still people at the end of the day. It's still the human aspect that is the most vulnerable thing in cybersecurity. When we make a mistake, I fall for something, you click on something that you shouldn't have. It could happen to any of us, mm -hmm. but that's the, I don't know if low tech is the right word that still works. And it works darn well, so much so that I think that is probably more common and prevalent than anything else. And while we can lean into, oh, the hot, sexy AI buzzwords, I think those attacks are real. Absolutely a thousand percent deep fakes, vo like voice cloning, fake voicemails and calls, etc. Those are real. I think they're a little bit rare, but becoming more common. They are not quite just the simple, stupid, easy stuff that still works and still beats up the industry in today's day and age. That was a long-winded story. I don't know. Did I, I ran all over the you map. Did. <laughs> you did, actually. And I guess a lot of our listeners, I think, are looking for, what are your tips? I think the TikTok one is a great example. Like, I, if you know what PowerShell is, right? Oh, yeah. Like, you know instantly, like, I'm not going to do this. But what are your tips for people to avoid these types of social engineering attacks? Mm. This is the thing. This, this is the point where, you know, I start to feel like, a certain kind of shame and embarrassment as I, maybe a fellow security professional and practitioner, as you know, that's like, I feel bad. And that we say the same thing over and over and over again. And it's the easy, silly, simple stuff, but it's the right answer. It's the, oh, use a password manager. So you've got long, complex passwords, secure and safe for every service. I don't know any of my passwords. You could hold me at gunpoint. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to tell you my password. Um, <laughs> Hey, yeah. get that antivirus running. Make sure if you've got 
the capability for it, EDR, endpoint detection mm -hmm. response for businesses and organizations. Be smart with what you do, you click on, you install, uh, et cetera. And I think if I may, and I don't want to beat a dead horse, but you mentioned just exactly, if you knew what PowerShell is, you clearly wouldn't mm -hmm. fall for a malware or scam or deception on lies like this. So as I know folks not, may not always be receptive to it, but the absolute best answer I think we've got is that education. It's just making sure yeah. folks know and understand what this all is. Uh, so I hope we are moving the needle and really making a difference to get that message out because you're right that, hey, you just got to have that context and understanding. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I think education is the big, the big thing here. And I always encourage people, you know, in our industry to educate friends and family members, especially our friends and family that aren't as tech savvy as, as you and I, John, but um, really trying to pass that knowledge to them and, and break it down in a way that they can actually understand it, right? So they may not know or care what PowerShell is, right. but it's about the actual attack itself and the techniques that are being used. If we could do more of that education, I think uh, everybody would be a little bit better off. Well, hey, I think we're all in it and I hope we're doing the yep. right thing. Yes, that, that's right. That's right. So uh, you do have a couple of things coming up that I wanted to give a plug for. So uh, my employer, my, my day job, Sneak, uh, where I work, John's going to be hosting something called Fetch the Flag on February 27th from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. So, John, you want to talk a little bit about this uh, awesome event coming up? Absolutely. And thank you again and again. And I, I know I feel like I'm kind of running around trying to do everything that I can, but it's a blast. It's so meaningful and very, very worthwhile. Uh, and Sneak uh, is an incredible partner. They, they're great friends. They're great people. Uh, and I'm always so, so grateful for their support. This is, I think, the second time now that we've mm -hmm. been putting together the Capture the Flag. Uh, and the nickname with Patch, the Sneak mascot, is Fetch the Flag. But that is where we get hands-on keyboard. We get to go practical. We get to go application-based. We get to beat up and solve some challenges or tasks and activities and understanding web security, like web applications, or even binary exploitation, low-level programming and uh, programs and applications and memory corruption. Maybe some crypto, maybe some forensics, maybe some cloud security. A lot of fun with Capture the Flag is that you get these Jeopardy-style categories, and you can kind of go explore and chase whatever is most interesting to you. But it should be a ton of fun, uh, and I'm really looking forward to the game. Yeah, and so we will have that linked in the show notes for anybody that wants to register. So plenty of time when this episode is released. So if you are interested in that event, definitely register and check it out. It's free, free to register. Well, if I may sprinkle in one little tidbit, I think it's yeah. cool when we have uh, worlds collide here. Because while we've got this upcoming sneak fetch the flag and CTF event for 2025, uh, we were just discussing Just Hacking Training earlier, that training platform. And alongside the courses and the exercises and the activities, one thing that we've also got included there is the Capture the Flag archives. So while, oh, the game, the competition and event might run for a weekend or for a day, and then it's dead and gone, totally ephemeral, temporary thing. Well, one of the things I love and I'm so excited about with Just Hacking Training is that we can keep that permanently accessible on demand whenever you want to spin up the challenges even from like 2023 sneak fetch the flag that's all available right there for you and i hope some folks play wow that's great just knowing that you can go back even if you missed the event you can go back and uh and check the training out to see yeah. it again that's and awesome. it's beyond just sneak fetch the flag uh, yeah. some of our previous fun we've had the NomCon event we've had of course hacktivity con we've got oh grim con b-sides boston just all the events wow. all the things that we're doing and having a lot of fun with them that is awesome well john it has been an absolute pleasure having you on the show how can our listeners find out more about you and everything you got going on well thank you so much tom this has been a blast well if folks were wanting to track me down hey it should be pretty easy to find me uh, <laughs> online I, I don't know if i joke i'm i'm a walking docs <laughs> my, yes. my name is out there my face is out there you can find my ugly mug and the silly red hair um but just search john hammond whether it's on youtube i'm on same on linkedin same on twitter uh hey being upfront and honest, hey, that's me. Uh, would love to chat. Please don't be a stranger. Reach out. Happy to be a friend. Awesome. Well, well, thank you again, John, for coming on the show. And for everyone else, thank you for listening. And until next time, stay safe, stay secure, and stay private. Thank you for watching or listening this episode. Be sure to subscribe wherever you like to get your podcasts. Visit sharedsecurity.net for merch, previous episodes, and more. 
If you'd like to help support the podcast, join our Patreon to get ad-free episodes and many more exclusive supporter-only benefits. Visit sharedsecurity.net slash supporter for more details.